Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials, all info, no fluff. And today I wanted to show you all my hotkeys for editing items. Now in the past few episodes, we've talked about a bunch of hotkeys related to tracks, about your overall view, how to maximize your screen real estate. So while usually I start these tutorials by showing you all the defaults and then tell you how I built upon them, in the interest of time, this time I won't do that. I will mention all of that stuff in the blog. And in the blog, I will actually publish a full list of all my hotkeys so you can check them out. And you will see that some of them have been mentioned in previous videos, but I've never actually had them all in one place. So when it comes to setting hotkeys, a lot of people's instinct is to use letters that help them remember the hotkey. So if they're doing something with reverse, they would put it on R. If they're doing something with trim, they will do it with T. And I try to do that as much as possible. However, when it comes to editing hotkeys, let's forget about what the letters are. We are just looking at these as keys. What I want to do is I want to set my most used hotkeys on my most accessible keys. Things that I can press quickly with one hand and without having to look down at my keyboard. Most of these keys for me fall into what I'd like to call zone one. So zone one starts at escape, all the way to F4, down to B, of course, including the space bar. When we're typing things, our left hand is on this zone, our right hand goes next to that, kind of around this area, what I like to call zone two. But when we're editing, we have our dominant hand, for me, it's my right on our mouse, and our left hand is laying in zone one. All these letters, Q, A, Z, W, S, X, all of this stuff that's around here, here, I think are our most easily accessible keys. I also try to put similar operations either on adjacent keys or I would put them on the same key with different modifiers. So hopefully this logic makes sense to you. So I have an audio file right here and if I press tab, my edit cursor will go to its beginning and select it. I've shown this before. All the links to stuff that I've covered before will go in the description, so don't worry about it. And from here, I have S set to split items at mouse cursor. So this doesn't care about where my edit cursor is if I want to make a bunch of chops to my audio, I can just do it really quickly. It will also select the right item. So whatever item is selected, it'll split them into two items and then select the right one. With any item selected, I can put my edit cursor anywhere. And if I press A, it will trim the beginning of that file to the edit cursor. So before, after. And then the same way I have D, trim the right edge of the item back. So before, after. So if I want to, for example, get rid of this little bit, I can hit S, click here, hit A, it's gone. From there, I have have my Q and W to move stuff left and right by grid size. Now splitting by mouse cursor is very cool, very quick. However, I can't actually split multiple files the same way. So in the event that I want to split all my files from the same place, place my edit cursor wherever I want to split, and then I can select the files that I want and I can press X. X will split selected items at edit cursor. And the same thing happens with grouped items. So with grouped items, I can still split them independently by pressing S. It would ignore ignore the grouping, press X, it will split all of them. Now, while we're on the subject of grouping, the defaults for grouping and ungrouping item in Reaper are G and U. I have changed these to Command G and Command and U for a very simple reason. You may accidentally just press G. Maybe you accidentally ungrouped them, you didn't notice, now your whole project is out of sync, you're screwed. So adding a modifier to that is better, and now I have my G and U free to do other things with. So the thing I do with U is dynamic split, which Reaper has on D, but as you can see, D is right here. I want to do something with D that I do often. That's why I use D to trim right edge of items and I use U for dynamic split. Let's get to F and G. So A and D trim the beginnings and ends of items. F and G put fades there. With my edit cursor here, if I press F, it'll fade into cursor like that. With G, it will fade out from cursor to the end of item. Next, when I'm working with like a bunch of fragments of audio, I often will want to have unique identifiers on these. So I have set Z or Z, whatever, floats your boat to color selected items. If I want to identify a group of items in some way, I can just press Z. There'll be a different color. And later when I come back, I will know, oh, like uh, I meant to delete this stuff. Moving on, I have what I like to call the get over here action. If you're a Harry Potter nerd, let's call it the ASIO action. That's when I want to grab a bunch of files and I want to quickly move them somewhere. So for example, I have a marker here. Let's say I want to move all these items to this marker. I can do it by dragging. Sometimes there'd be items in the way Sometimes this distance is pretty far. So if all my files were right there and I want to bring them back, it's hard to exactly kind of do it precisely. So I have what I call the get over here action. So I press one to put my edit cursor on the marker there. I right drag to get these items and I go get over here and they get over there. 
<laughs> e will bring the beginning of the item to edit cursor. If I press option and E, it'll bring the end of the items to edit cursor. I can go reverse, get over here. And I have option control and E set to the SWS version of the same action. So that's useful in case I have like a big kind of swelly item where the peak happens somewhere later in the item, not the beginning. And I want to sync that up, let's say to this transition from A to B, for example, I can select it and get over here. So one more time, E for the beginning, option E for end, option control and E for the snap offset. Now, if I want to move my items from track to track, what I can do is let's say I want to move things here. So I can press T and that'll move selected items to the selected track to the same place. Then I hit E there right there. So let's say I want to grab all these items and move them to this track. I select them all. I press T, they get up there, press E, they get over here. Next up I have B and B is a special type of splitting. So the first thing is if I hit B with an item selected, it'll put a split. It didn't put it exactly where my edit cursor was. Instead, what B does is it'll find the nearest zero crossing and split the items there. So sometimes this can be pretty close to where we were. Sometimes it can be quite far, like in this case, if I have a time selection, then B will cut the bounds of that time selection. And while B just splits the selected item, if I do control and B, it'll trim it to time selection. So it'll get rid of the two ends of the file. You probably know that V and P open the track envelopes for volume and pan, and that's a toggle. And in case I want to do the same thing for items, I can go control P and that'll bring up the pan envelope for each individual item. And I can go control and V and that'll be the volume envelope for the item. And then I have control and N for adjusting that envelope's pitch. And all of these are toggles. Even without bringing the volume envelope, I can do control up and control down to change the loudness of this stuff. And this is cool because while it is in Zone two, I can still do it with one hand. If I bring my hand over here, use this control on the right side and just do it. That'll still be pretty quick. You may also find yourself sometimes working with really quiet bits of audio. So here are a couple of really useful default actions. If I go shift and up, I will zoom into the waveform. This doesn't affect the loudness of this item at all. All it's doing is increasing what is referred to as its display gain. It's just kind of adding a gain to its display. And that way I can know, well, these are not silence areas. There is sound there. It's just really quiet. So shift up will zoom in, shift down will zoom out. If you want to get back to where you were by default, you just hold shift down all the way because the display gain is at its minimum by default and it goes up by 36 dB. So again, my control up and down, that is actually adding gain to the item, making the item louder. Shift up and down, it's just zooming in and out of the waveform. It's not actually doing anything to the audio that you see. So all this fancy stuff aside, don't forget the universal hotkeys that is basically the same across all programs. They all work in Reaper 2. Command and C and Command and V for copying and pasting stuff. Command and X and Command and V for cutting and pasting stuff. Command and Z to undo the last action. I could do Shift Command and Z to redo the last action. And then Reaper obviously builds on top of that as well. So with any item selected, I can go Command C, Command V to paste it. But if I hit Command, Shift and C, it'll just copy within the time selection, pasted it there. Similarly, I can copy any item and I can paste it here. I can also go Shift and V and Shift and V will insert time and paste it there. So it will kind of be like uh, ripple editing per track is enabled for a quick second. And finally, I have two actions that will put my go to EQ and go to compressor on items. So if I hit option and Q, that'll put my favorite EQ on the item and hitting option and one will put my go to all purpose compressor on that item. And I'll talk in the blog about how to create these actions in more detail. So I think we pretty much covered all of zone one. Hopefully I didn't forget any. I probably have some of the stuff I didn't mentioned like tilde key or shift and tilde. We talked about these in other videos. So this video will be put in a playlist and a link to that playlist where I talk about all my hotkeys. So I think in the realm of all the things in the audio field that you can do, the one place where people lose a lot of time is during the editing phase. And the way I look at it, you know, if I'm getting paid $500 to do some editing on a short film or something, the faster I edit, the more I'm getting paid per hour for that. So that's an area where you want to optimize as much as possible. I'm putting a little time in 
in to customize your hotkeys and getting really familiar with them will pay in the long run, literally. In the next episode, I'm going to show you the media item properties window and then show you a bunch of hotkeys that I set for quickly changing settings here. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the work I do, please subscribe and share with your friends and all that stuff. And if you really, really like the work I do, you can donate to me through buymeacoffee.com. The link of that will be in the description. Thanks to all our previous donors, though we haven't had one in a while. And take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.